So that's where we concentrate now, black holes. Okay. So black holes, what are they? Really heavy stars, roughly between 25 to 50 solar mass. That means really, really supermassive. When they die, they end up as a black hole when they die. What happens is this. When the star is dying towards the end of its state, the core of the star collapses, collapses, collapses. And because it, the core is so heavy, nothing stops that collapse. Okay? For other stars, they weren't that heavy, and then something prevented it from stopping, from collapsing, and that's the pressure of the core. You know? This one, nothing prevents it from stopping and collapsing. So what happens is the core of the parent star continues to collapse after the death of the star until the core of the star becomes infinitely small. We can't imagine such an object on Earth. How can something have mass and not have any size? have almost infinitely zero size, okay? That kind of an object is called a singularity. Well, we believe the universe began with a singularity, so think of a black hole's ending as the end of the universe. It's like a full cycle. The, the universe began, singularity exploded, and then the black hole dies, it forms a singularity, you know? So. Now here's what we would expect to happen. When you're at the surface of a, a regular star, just like our sun or something, you shine a light beam from the regular star. We don't expect the star to influence the light beam that much. Maybe the light beam curves a little bit. And as a matter of fact, the curvature of a light beam around our own sun was detected in 1919. Uh, Einstein's general theory of relativity pr uh, predicted that a light beam would bend just a tad bit going around the sun, and then they detected that about four or five years after he predicted it in 1919. On the, they did a, a measurement of the solar eclipse of 1919. So, but the bending of the light around the regular star is not that significant. Then you go to a white dwarf. White dwarf is denser, okay? Very, very, very dense. If you shine a light beam from a white dwarf, you're expecting the light beam to bend a little bit more. You see here? The light beam is bending. That means the curvature of space created by the white dwarf, it curves the space around it so much that it causes the light beam to deflect and bend. Okay? Now, when you go to the surface of a neutron star, neutron star is even denser and heavier than a white dwarf. So you shine a light beam, Look at the curvature of space is so much that the light beam bends even more, you see, like that. Okay, then you go to the black hole, which is the ultimate end of the, this progression, right? Black hole has mass, but no size at all. So it's infinitely dense. So if you shine a light beam from the, edge of, from the, the surface of a black hole, the light beam will bend, and then there will be a certain edge. After that, the light beam will return back on itself. Okay, you see it bends, it bends, returns. What does that mean? That means the light beam is trapped inside this black hole. Why is it called black? Because the light can't escape it. This region is known as the event horizon. You see, the, the, edge, the edge of the, this region is the event horizon. Light beam is trapped inside the event horizon. Okay, there's two kinds of uh, black holes that are predicted to exist. One is called one is called um, regular black hole. This is a Schwarzschild black hole. You see, this is the event horizon. This is the singularity. So if you shine a light beam, it's going to always come back at you, you see? It's going to get trapped. So this is a regular black hole. It's a non-spinning black hole. So Schwarzschild, this is a, a black hole um, predicted by a physicist named Schwarzschild. 
based on Einstein's general theory of relativity. He predicted that this kind of black hole should exist uh, in 1916. The physical features include a singularity, which is the middle, you see, a point of infinite gravity where space and time cease to exist. Event horizon, a region around the singularity where the escape velocity is greater than the speed of light. That means in order to escape from that black region, you need to go faster than the speed of light. But no, nobody, nothing can go faster than the speed of light, so you're always going to be trapped inside of that region. And so therefore, it looks black. It's a lot of people have uh, tried to wonder what would happen if someone fell in there, you know? Well, basically, you fall in there, you, what will happen is we won't even be able to see you, okay? Uh, as a person is falling into event horizon, something known as an infinite redshift happens. The light coming from you gets redshifted. You start looking more and more reddish. And the next thing you know, the person disappears. You call the person over, what's going on, what's going on? They cannot communicate with you anymore. Because even if they try to send a radio beam toward you, it will get trapped. So once you fall in, you're gone. So well, here's what happens here. Um, Leaping first into a black hole, this is a concept uh, uh, picture. A person of normal proportions would be distorted by the tidal forces long before reaching the event horizon around the typical black hole. Tidal forces would stretch the body lengthwise while compressing it laterally. You see, it gets compressed. So this is kind of what the moon and the sun does on the earth, but much more uh, extreme. The singularity is right here. You're falling towards the singularity, right? Your feet are closer to the singularity, so they get pulled much stronger. Your head doesn't get pulled as much, so you basically get stretched like this. And this is what it means to get spaghettified. You look like a spaghetti, okay? This will warm up your body. You will, you will melt, and you will, be, you will die, basically. It might separate you. So it says friction from this distortion would heat the body to high temperatures and the rocket would get stretched out uh, and basically you just die, you know. So if a person falls into the event horizon, they will get sucked toward the singularity. You have no way of preventing that. And you will become spaghettified and die. Okay, not a very good ending. And you can't even tell your friends and family that what's happening and come and save me and everything because you have no way of communicating with them. No one will know about it. No one can see that you're in there. No one will see what's going on to you. Schwarzschild radius is the radius of the event horizon. So if we go back to that other picture. That's the radius of this guy from here to here. Okay, how big is that Schwarzschild radius? It is proportional to the mass of the black hole, okay? So where is the mass of the black hole concentrated? It's in a singularity. Singularity, this one. The, the lowest mass black hole is three times the mass of the sun. So imagine all that mass, three times the mass of our sun, is focused in on a small, infinitely small space. How that happens? Don't ask me. We can't understand it with our human brains. Okay? So it is proportional to the mass of the black hole. If, the, if that mass of the black hole, you see the three is the smallest mass it can have. If it's three solar masses, then we would predict that this radius is going to be how many kilometers? Nine kilometers. Nine kilometers, which is about uh, six miles. So if you have a three solar mass black hole, that's about the smallest black hole you can have and the lightest black hole. It's going to be about six miles radius, nine kilometers. Okay, and then on the heavy side, 15 solar mass black hole. Okay, if this guy is 15, it's going to be bigger. Okay. And its radius is going to be 45 kilometers. Which is about, uh, let's see, about 30 miles, I would say. 
So 45 kilometers, about 30 miles. So you notice that if it's heavier, it's just the radius is going to be bigger, OK? And then we can ask a question. What if you had a 25 solar mass black hole? What is its radius going to be? It should be bigger than 45, right? Well, what pattern do we notice here? 3 solar mass is 9. 15 solar mass is 45. It looks pretty linear, right? If you multiply this 3 by 3, you get 9. If you multiply 15 by 3, you get 45. 25 solar mass black hole should be 25 times 3, 75. Okay? So if it's 25 solar mass black hole, it should be about 75 kilometers, which is about uh, 48, 49 miles. So let's just say approximately 50 miles. Okay, This kind of black hole, the one that I just talked about, the stationary black hole, it's not that interesting because it's just basically the end. You, you just go in there and you can't really do much with it. I would probably say the only way we could use these kind of black holes in the future, if we ever get advanced enough, we can find one of these black holes and bring it close to Earth and then use it every time uh, we, we have too much trash here on Earth. Put it in a rocket, take it out to the black hole, let's say keep it somewhere between us and the sun, you know, uh, and then we can just go take it there and dump trash in there. So we can use these kind of black holes as huge trash dumping sites because all that would happen, imagine the Earth is here, you know. So the black hole is pretty far away from us. It's not going to harm us. So we can just take a rocket, just make sure don't get close enough to it, you know, and then take our trash and then dump it in there. Then what happens? That trash falls into the black hole. What happens to the mass of the black hole? Gets heavier and the black hole grows a tiny bit. Okay, it's not going to grow that fast. So we can just keep throwing trash and trash and trash. It'll be a nice source of clean. Um, we ha don't have to burn anything, <laughs> right? We just put trash in there, and it grows. It grows slightly, slightly, slightly. So if it's far enough from us, it's going to be billions of years before it ever grows and s sucks the earth up. So we're OK, you know? Um, so we can envision the future generations. Maybe they're going to do that one day. <laughs>